Tony, I think the big surprise here on inflation sure. was that you did not see a moderation in the good side of things. We knew that everything was going to services, right, with airlines. But, but Target starting to mark down apparel and TVs, we know. We just got that warning. Why, why are we not seeing that in the data at this point? Well, they say about monetary policy, they're long and variable legs. And you could say uh, monetary policy is like walking a dog with a long leash. Pretty difficult to control. Pretty difficult to say where it's going. And when leaving one regime and the regime we're in, which we all dislike, is this high inflation regime. Um, when leaving it, there tend to be uh, remnants of the old regime. So we should we'll probably continue to see news like this for a little while longer. But by the fall, and almost certainly by the winter, no one wants to call a peak, and the idea of catching falling, falling knives is, should be loathed. Uh, the news should be a lot better, and investors at that time will probably be looking ahead to the idea of peak inflation if it hasn't already occurred, and the mood will be a, a lot better, more than likely. Well, investors have been saying, I think, Barry, you have been saying that we have seen peak inflation. A, lo a lot of people like you have been totally wrong. <clears throat> I would uh, admit to being totally wrong. Um, goods inflation, core goods inflation was 12.4 in February. It's 8.5 now. Um, last night, we got Chinese manufacturing PPI. That's fallen from, you know, over 10 percent down to six. You've had um, uh, CPI, even on a quarter on quarter basis, fall from 3 percent or 8 percent in March down to 5.2. So the momentum is is decidedly headed down. But Tony hit a great point, which is uh, monetary policy does work with long and variable lags. And the two sectors outside of energy that most strongly contributed to the beats on the headline and the marginal beat on the core this month were the two most interest rate sensitive parts of the economy, namely autos and housing. So yes, we got a 220 plus now basis point shock to mortgage rates. Um, my work on housing prices using things like a correlation matrix indicate that they're peaking right now and are likely to come off very strongly by the fall again, as Tony indicated. And um, I think that that broad story is intact. What isn't intact, though, is the political fallout of this and the policy implications yeah. of it are still really acute. And um, that brings up the question of what does the Fed do next week? Um, I'd love to see them accelerate the uh, caps on winding down the balance sheet, even start considering outright sales of mortgages, that would push those longer term rates up and potentially mm -hmm. accelerate that cooling of demand in autos and housing where demand is in excess of supply. But um, more likely, if they do anything, and they probably won't, but if they do anything, it'd be a 75 instead of a 50. How likely do you think that is, Tony, that we'll do a 75 basis point hike? Fed Chair Powell ruled it out last time, but this is a pretty big surprise in terms of inflation. Uh, no groundwork has been laid by the Fed for that possibility. Uh, it, it would well, come. Well, they're in quiet a, period a now. Bit. Yeah, but, but in looking at the uh, markets and forward pricing, Fed funds futures, euro dollar futures, etc., it seems like the markets only have a fraction of that 75 basis points priced in, meaning the extra quarter. Uh, it, it, the landscape would be different, of course, for the July meeting. So if Fed, if Fed Chair Powell thinks he wants to lay the groundwork for the possibility of it, he could then. But then you could argue, Sarah, that uh, why wait? If you're going to hint at it, why not just do it? And there is a benefit to acting tough. Uh, I would often call it uh, tough love. Uh, the, the, t the more vigilant the Fed is toward inflation, the better the outlook. And the fact that the Fed's front-loading its interest rate hikes now compared to some other cycles, for example, 1994, when the 10-year yield got to over 8%, so, that front-loading should limit how much it has to do later.